anyone and all. Most respected resource person for the day, uh, Dr. Arati Omar, Dr. Biju, and dear delegates. So today we are on to the your third day, right? And I think as part of the introductory remarks, I have already uh, given you putting into what exactly needs to be looked into when we are talking about financial analytics. Uh, just before we just before I started off with this, I was interacting with Madam and the same issue we were talking about because I think we have a most appropriate person today uh, to deal with analytics because it is a person who has worked with analytics, who has done a PhD on analytics, who has got numerous publications using the entire, what do you call, crux of analytics. And above all, who is going to practice analytics. That is the most fascinating part of it. And we were looking at uh, what actually is a doctoral program, what actually is research, and how we actually are trying to see that you give life to theories. You give life to what you have studied. Uh, that's why today we have started using words like professor of practice and all that. A professor who is also enabling or empowering the learner to put what he has actually learned into practice. If you give a man a fish, he will eat it. If you teach a man to fish, he will live with it. Now we are teaching all of you to fish. We are not giving you the fish, we are teaching you how to fish. This is the concept of analytics. Already the last day we were looking at, I was talking about the relevance of real-time data, the shift from primary and secondary to the second by second, inch by inch, evolving real-time data, which is big data and which is there. Now today as part of this keynote, the only thing that I would like to tell you again is the same fact I don't know how deep and how strong you conceive this idea. There is big data out there, somewhere out there. And that data is very big. It is very huge. It is, it is a composite of different elements. How do I look at it? How do I observe it? How do I segment it? How do I pull out? And how do I use, apply and enrich myself? I am just taking one concept because something which can be very comprehensible to all of you. Suppose I say COVID, something very close and something which is very light. When I say COVID, there is big data out there. Tons and tons of real time data on COVID. Some of it pertain to the death that has taken place, different nations, different continents. Some of it will pertain to the virus behavior, how it mutates, what is its changing form. Some of it might relate to the loss of jobs, some of which might relate to industry, some of it might relate to the impact on different sectors of the industry. So tons and tons of data on COVID are available. Now, as a researcher in a particular domain, say for example, if I am in medicine, I would be interested in how the virus has behaved and what, is, what has been the mutation course it has taken, so on and so forth. I pull down that data. I try to see how it is classified, how it is analyzed, how it moves, what are the patterns. And I try to identify an issue. I try to identify a problem. And there goes my research. Now I have something new which is moving into the domain of knowledge as far as medicine is concerned. Now, if I am in social science, perhaps I might pull down data relating to migration, pull down data relating to loss of jobs. Again, I identify an issue and I go down into its analytics. This is all about analytics. But the issue that is there before you and the issue that was there before me 40 years back is entirely different. 
Because 40 years back, the way we digged into data is entirely different. There was no internet, there was no search engines, there was hardly any use of any database. And the only option that we had was to sit in the library, look at, pull out journals and books and read and reduce that, take Xerox copies and somebody has said something there. You look at the reference sources from there, go back to their institute, collect data from there and that was what it was happening. Today it is on your fingertips. Tons and tons of data that can enrich you. I was just talking to Madam, she was saying that even after she joins her job, I come to her profile a bit later. Uh, she will be doing part of her work from home. Her husband is again a financial analyst with uh, Crystal after her, after his doctorate. He can work from home. In fact, the option for building up a career from home without even attaching yourself to an institution is very huge today if you are competent enough to put data into a perspective. The whole idea is how you give life to a theory. How you make a theory live before you. You study technical analysis, fundamental analysis, risk management, you have your uh, capital adequacy norms, you have your uh, capital adequacy ratios. Many things we study out of these, what are the theories which we can enliven in a context where we can say that I am going to make this my career choice. I am going to make this as some new knowledge with which I am going to get energy. This is the whole idea of translational research. Very popular now, I think Madam will be telling you more about that. Translate your knowledge into action. Transform yourself with the rich data that you have. Transform yourself with the content that you have. Now when I am saying the big data is available out there, you need to pull down, you need to relate, you need to collate with the situation. It is there that your R and your Python is going to be useful. And that R and Python is something which is going to make you assure that your analysis is relevant in context and in application. So on those lines, you are going to get more strength. You have, to go, you have to find yourself to be more deep into it. Now the concern that we keep having and I have shared this it's on several locations, anytime a training is held or anytime we give our input to the researchers, there is at least at times a sense of complacency where we believe, okay, this I am just using for my PhD. My PhD is an end. Somehow I should get a degree. Degree is going to be a gateway to a teaching profession and once I get into a teaching profession then I must get my promotion. Once I get my promotion I must get my increment. UGC is saying with PhD you have this. So don't just connect between that. Try to connect on the basis of a wider perspective. Try to first see that you have true knowledge with you. You have true competency with you. You have the requisite skill to take data from there visualize it in its right con in its right context and apply it that power that you have with you that competency that you have with you is crucial that is what is going to transform you even if you do not get an assistant professor's job you will always be engaged and the other part of it your remuneration your income will keep flowing so work on this line put your minds into this this is a very serious issue that we are talking now and again in different context under the university's grants commission or under higher education. The other day we were talking about outcome based education, the Bloom's taxonomy. What is, it what is it telling? It is very clearly specifying that one key outcome from every learning process must be the ability to apply what you have learned. What is research? Again, they are talking about translation research. We are talking about internship embedded uh, PG programs. So we are going to be in a world which is entirely different. There will be lots of things where you, the limitations of time and space will actually be broken. You will see lots of things happening across the world where you can even sit from your small office in a small place and have a very wide clientele doing many things. So when we say R, when we say E-views, 
when you say Python, it's not just learning a process. It's not just learning how to use a software. It is actually talking about understanding the big data that is out there, trying to pull out what is relevant, trying to have a very strong skill of observing and listening. It's not just seeing and hearing. If you keep your ears open, you will be hearing something, but you should listen to the pulse, listen to the data, tune yourself to the data, observe the data, what are the trends, what are the patterns, what are the inclinations, what are the indications, where will it actually move, how can you actually extrapolate. You are a very young uh, generation, unlike me, we have reached a generation either where we have no hair or grey hair. You are all with black hairs and very young and dynamic, very much oriented towards all the IT enabled skills. We learned 40 years back when I learned, I never saw a computer. I do not know what is a laptop. I've never seen a, a mobile phone. So we came out from that generation. In fact, uh, my generation would be the last generation which is going to be there without exposure to IT. The next generation onwards, every school child will be oriented to that. As I said, till I reached my teaching career, we never had the internet, not myself, anybody, nobody had the internet at that point of time. We never saw anything in the, in, on computers. But there was one skill which we had which was very strong. I said the data that we had was very limited. But this limited data that we had, we went deep and deep into it. When I got hold of an article or got hold of a small piece of research, I still remember how many times we read it, how we at length discussed this with others, reduced it, and I believe that is a big skill, ability to condense, ability to reduce, and ability to, what you call, interrogate further. That is the key to what we call a hypothesis. So this big data out there, when reduced, when analyzed, must give you a feel that something is happening somewhere and something is likely to happen in future. Suppose I look at the big data on employment, the big data on the virus, the big data on the possibilities of future change based on the COVID database, I might get a feel that something is likely to change in future. That gives me the right setting for a hypothesis. I hope you will open your minds, your thoughts on this. You will put into perspective some of your learnings. We would like to see you people transformed in that form. And maybe at some point of time, somebody will come and tell us back that, sir, this path which you gave at that point of time has made me what I am today. We, uh, we have a number of cases where we, I was just discussing with Madam, one of our research scholars in economics. I keep telling this in, she used to frequently come to our department. Our department when it was earlier in the Palayam campus, and they used to discuss it. She used to tell me that uh, what's happening in research. She was doing basically on the capital market operations and trade movements. So she looked at a very wider perspective. And today she is the head of a research team with SEBI. So I was astonished to uh, what you call uh, understand or what you call comprehend the kind of work that that person is doing. She was right from the beginning trying to see some life in what she is actually doing rather than seeing it as a dead entity which will just give me a degree. So think beyond your degrees, think beyond, I'm not saying degrees are unimportant. Yes, you need your degree, you need your job, you need your promotion. But beyond that, if I'm empowered, I live with my skills. Forget about whether I get it with a PSC or get a job here. So try to take it in that context. I wish you again once the very best. I am sure uh, with the sessions which have been uh, with uh, Dr. Mohan and Pillay and all completed, you would have been uh, enriched with that. But then, uh, what you get through a workshop is certain sparks, certain bits. Now it is up to you to blow it up or to conceal it and keep it hidden. If you choose to keep it hidden, it will just remain there. If you choose to blow it up, you use all the possible means to blow it up. All possible means. I still remember how from a workshop way back in 1988 when I was a PG student, we got some input and there was a resource person like Madam who was here. We took a cue from what that resource person said at that point of time 
we continuously two or three of our students continuously kept interacting with them subsequently it led to a project and subsequently it gave us lot of insights to the process so how you use these resource persons in future how you use these resources in future there are many students i have seen they keep learning about spss one workshop two workshop three workshop is over and when they do their final analysis in the phd they are saying sir i have entrusted it to a statistician and that person is now doing my spss so what happened with your learning now this is i must keep this in mind that it is not just for one use it is for a lifelong learning a lifelong transformation a lifelong translation that must take place in each one of you so i wish you the very best on that now uh, we have i'm not taking much of her time because she is the resource person and i was rather fascinated by looking at her profile uh, uh, dr aradhi omar who has uh, actually finished her phd from indian institute of technology iit madras uh, in the department of management studies she has just come out of her so she is what you call uh, what fulfilled with live experiences on phd just finished so she has just defended herself in december right december 2022 so she has done her entire process and all throughout she was uh having i just went through her profile lots of experience in terms of paper presentations with iit kharagpur iims iim rohtak then asia pacific uh, uh, yeah institutions across the globe paper presentations on different issues in financial analytics and she has worked extensively on r as well as on uh, python in terms of financial analytics and as i told you she has now received an assignment as senior vice president in barclays financial services and she is very soon going to join there so before i introduce her i wish her all the very best in her new uh, endeavors in the industry uh, because now for her it is a challenge at barclays they will be asking you what did you learn how are you going to do your credit risk analysis how are you going to manage risk what does this value mean when these values are going in the industry what do you take out of it so these are the challenges where she is going to give life and i i was asking you what actually made her move from academics to industry the answer is very simple you need to be uh, having uh, very good values in terms of practice and application and that is something which is very relevant for iits iims iics and all they give lots of emphasis to those who have uh, true examples of uh, practice so she is going to address you so and uh, you will have a good take away from her so try to take advantage of that and uh, on behalf of university of kerala on behalf of the department on behalf of all those who have gathered here and above all on my personal behalf to you madam i extend a very very warm welcome i also welcome all of you the delegates not just as i said earlier for this workshop i welcome you to a new world of learning where what you learn will find life and action in future now with these uh, words of inspiration and with these words of uh, what you call uh, added courage and wisdom to you allow me to conclude thank you Hello. 